Hey everybody! I haven't done a video where I recapped what books I've been reading in a while, so I thought I'd talk about that today. This list goes back pretty far, I think maybe to the end of February or beginning of March. Basically, these are all the books that I've read since I finished that Kindle Unlimited trial, minus the books I did solo reviews of, The Book Thief, and Unequal Affections. Book number one, I read The Austin Playbook by Lucy Parker, a contemporary romance that's part of her London Celebrities series, which features characters from the West End theatre scene. It's a fun, opposites-attract love story about a harsh theatre critic and a rising star who get off on the wrong foot. The friction between them doesn't last long, though, thanks to the one character's irrepressible good nature and the other's responsiveness to it. And as you might be able to guess from the title, it does have something to do with Jane Austen. This romantic comedy does have more mature content than uh, most of the other books that I typically discuss, so just be mindful of that should you decide that you want to read it. Book number two, I read East by Edith, hmm, I'm gonna get this wrong, Patu, which is a young adult retelling of the Norwegian East of the Sun, West of the Moon fairy tale, in which a girl is carried away from her home by an enchanted white bear and brought to an icy palace. I was not familiar with this fairy tale, but the book does a thorough job with world building and storytelling. It feels immersive. I also noticed several similarities to the Cupid and Psyche myth. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. It does start to drag at a certain point during the main character's journey to the Troll Kingdom. I felt like the author didn't want her to arrive too quickly or too easily because that would seem too convenient, which is understandable, but I did end up skimming through a couple episodes in that section and I felt like I didn't really miss anything, which tells me that that section could have been a little shorter. Book number three was Sorry I'm Late, I Didn't Want to Come by Jessica Pan. This is nonfiction. Pan is an introvert who decided to spend a year trying to live like an extrovert and pushing herself to try terrifying things like doing stand-up comedy and hosting a dinner party. In this book, she describes her journey with its successes and its failures, along with some detours along the way. I am also an introvert, so I could identify with a lot of this, although, as Pan herself points out, there are variations to how introverted introverts are, and I got the impression that she was a little further on the introverted scale than I am. It made for a funny, relatable, inspiring, and often cringy book. Pan does some things I definitely wouldn't do and probably wouldn't recommend, but it was cool to see how her experiment turned out. Book number four, I read The Last Coyote by Michael Conley, which is the fourth book in the Bosch series. This is the first one that I've read, a viewer recommendation. I thought it was a good mystery and a good story, as much about Bosch's own personal history as it was about solving the crime, a cold case in which the victim was his own mother. I didn't immediately warm up to Bosch, whose hot-headedness and tendency to react violently often got him and other people in trouble, but I could understand why he was like that, and that generated a lot of conflict for him. The biggest thing for me was that the book was so long, I am not used to a mystery being so drawn out. Um, there was also a romantic subplot that I thought felt a little obligatory. I could have done without it. But otherwise, I liked the book, and I wouldn't be opposed to reading another at some point. All four books so far I read through the library via Overdrive on my Kindle Fire, but because the last two took me quite a long time to get through, I felt like taking a break from ebooks. And what with the libraries being shut down, it seemed like a good time to read some books that I've had waiting for me right here at home, sitting unread on my bookshelves. So, I read And Be a Villain by Rex Stout, one of a couple Nero Wolf books in my collection that I've been saving. It's the first in the so-called Arnold Zeck trilogy. I read the third one in The Best Families last year and loved it. This one was very good, too, about someone who gets murdered during a live radio broadcast, and it's always a pleasure to spend some time with uh, the characters at Wolf's Brownstone on West 35th Street, including one of my literary boyfriends, Archie Goodwin. It's also always a pleasure to take a readerly trip to the Discworld. I read Men at Arms by Terry Pratchett, which means I've now read all five of the Discworld books I own, all the other ones I've read through the library. 
It's also a City Watch book. I think I've mentioned before that I have a preference for those. City Watch and Death, my favorite Discworld series subdivisions. This one was really funny. It focused on Corporal Carrot, and it was so close to a five-star rating. But my five-star ratings are a gut instinct rarely bestowed, and I didn't quite have that feeling when I finished it. I did give Guards Guards its predecessor five stars. Um, that one did give me that feeling, and I have read a couple reviews where people said that they liked Men at Arms much better. I don't know what the difference was for me. <laughs> Continuing on with the theme, I also read a Judy Bolton book I've been saving, The Unfinished House by Margaret Sutton. This one involves a suspected real estate scheme that Judy wants to expose. I liked it, but Judy kind of drove me nuts in this one. She has a big misunderstanding with Peter, which could have easily been cleared up with some communication, and that was frustrating. And there's an aspect of the mystery that seemed really obvious to me, so it was a little bit difficult to wait for everyone else to catch on. But I did have to remind myself that these books were written for young girls in the 1930s, and the reveal might not have been so apparent to that audience. All that said, I did really enjoy the fun dialogue between Peter and Judy and Judy's brother Horace in the last section of the book. They had some really great scenes together. Back on Overdrive, I read a graphic novel titled Jane, the Fox, and Me by Fanny Britt, illustrated by Isabel Arsenault. It's about a young teenage girl in Canada who's struggling with bullies at school and finds solace in reading Jane Eyre. I guess it's pretty obvious why I read this one, right? My library owns a physical copy of this book, and I've known about it for a couple years, but the catalog says it's shelved with the children's picture books, and there's no way that I'm going to go in there and try to find it in that mess. I also don't know why they put it there, because it is very clearly a young adult or preteen graphic novel, not a book for small children. Anyway, I happened to notice it being promoted on Overdrive, so I checked it out, and I'm glad I did because it was an interesting read, in spite of the fact that I chose the worst format in which to digest it. The story's got a surprisingly powerful pathos to it, as the main character is so unhappy and alone, having been inexplicably dumped by her old friends and become the target of their ridicule. The parallels to Jane Eyre aren't exact, but they don't have to be, and the book features some really nice illustrations, simple but effective. That's my quick update on what I've been reading lately. I hope you enjoyed the video, and maybe you found something that you'd like to check out. If you have any thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned, please do share them in the comments below, and I'll see you soon! Thanks for watching!